In this video, we learn how to find the lower quartile, upper quartile, and interquartile range from a frequency table. And to do that, we're going to work through the example that we see here, in which we're told find the lower quartile Q1, the upper quartile Q3, and the interquartile range IQR from the following frequency table, which we can see here. And this table summarizes the grades that were obtained by a group of students who sat an IB exam in which we can obtain a score of either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. Notice that these grades are organized in increasing order, as they should be, and for each of those grades we have a corresponding frequency, which tells us how many times that grade was seen. That being said, let's get started. The first thing we need to find here is the lower quartile Q1, and for that there's a formula that we'll need to use, which states that the position, position, of the lower quartile of Q1 is equal to n plus 1 over 4. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that formula. Do make a note of it. Now, let me point out two things. First of all, this formula does not give us the value of the lower quartile directly. Instead, it gives us its position. And what's meant by position, I will make perfectly clear in just a minute. The second thing I'd like to mention is what the n we see inside this formula refers to. And put simply, n is the number of values of data we have. Now here we don't have a long list of data, instead it's all been summarized for us in a frequency table. And so the total number of values we have, in other words, the total number of grades that were obtained, will be equal to the sum of all of these frequencies. And so to find what n is, what we usually do is add a cell at the bottom of our table, like this, inside of which we can write n equals to the sum of all of these frequencies. And you can use a calculator if you like, but here we have 2 plus 1, which is 3, plus 6, which is 9, plus 10, which is 19, plus 12, which is 31, plus 9, which is 40, plus 5, which is 45. And so n is equal to 45. And that tells us that 45 students sat this exam. Okay, now that we know what n is, we can go back to our formula for the position of the lower quartile, and we can copy this right-hand side and replace the n that we see by the 45 we just found, which would lead to 45 plus 1 over 4, so that's 46 over 4. And again, you can check with your calculator, but 46 divided by 4 is equal to 11.5. There we go. Remember, this isn't the value of the lower quartile, this is its position. And when we say position of the lower quartile, here's what we mean. Imagine if we were to write all of the grades obtained in increasing order. In other words, imagine if we made a long list of all of the grades. Well, that would be a list with 45 grades, the first two of which would be 1s, since the frequency of 1 is 2. In fact, I could say that, I could say we'd have a 1 followed by a 1. The next grade would be a 2, and there would only be one of them. So we'd have 1, 2 here. And the next six grades would be 3s. And I could go ahead and write that while I'm at it. So that's 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. And I could carry on this way all the way up to the last five grades, which would be 7s. So we'd have 7, 7, 7, 7, and 7. Okay, so writing out all of the 45 grades in increasing order would look something like this. And now, when we speak of the position of the lower quartile being equal to 11.5, it means that it's in between the 11th and 12th values in this list. And the 11th and 12th values would be somewhere amidst the three dots that I wrote here. And here's the thing. It's not practical to write out all of the values we have in a long list. And even if you may think that you could do it for 45 values, which I'm sure you can, what if n were equal to 100, or 1,000, or 10,000? Then writing out the full list of values simply wouldn't be feasible. And so here's how to find what the 11th and 12th values are from our frequency table. The idea is we're going to add a column, and that column is the cumulative frequency column. Cumulative frequency. And I'll quickly add the rows. Okay, now the first cumulative frequency will always be equal to the first frequency we have in the table. So in this case, that will just be 2. For the next cumulative frequency, it's equal to the previous one we found, so 2, plus the next frequency, so 1. And so 2 plus 1 is 3. And I carry on this way. 
For the next cumulative frequency, I add the 3 we just found to the next frequency, 6. And so 3 plus 6 is equal to 9. I carry on. 9 plus 10 is 19. 19 plus 12 is 31. And 31 plus 9 is 40. And finally, 40 plus 5 is 45. Notice that the last cumulative frequency we obtain is equal to n, and that should always be the case. And now here's an extra little something I like to write in the cumulative frequency column, which will make it easy for us to find what the 11th and 12th values are. And here's the whole idea. In this first cumulative frequency cell, since the cumulative frequency is 2, that tells us that if we were to write out the entire list of 45 grades in increasing order, from the first to the second value we'd have inside that list, the grades we'd see would be equal to 1. And those would be the two ones we can see at the beginning of this list here. Then, for the next cumulative frequency cell, I add 1 to the previous cumulative frequency, which was 2. And so 2 plus 1 is 3, which I write there. And since the cumulative frequency in that cell is equal to 3, I write another 3 to say that from the third value to the third value, so just one value, the grade in the list will be 2. I carry on this way and add 1 to this cumulative frequency, so 3 plus 1, which is 4. And since the cumulative frequency here is 9, that tells me that in my list of values, from the fourth to the ninth value in the list, we'll have 3s. I carry on and add 1 to the 9 we see here, and 1 plus 9 is 10, and so from the 10th to the 19th value in the list, and so I can quickly write 19, the grades we'd see would be 4s. And I carry on this way, 19 plus 1 is 20, and so the 20th value to the 31st value, so 31 here, they will all be 5s in our list of grades. Next, 31 plus 1 is 32, and so from the 32nd to the 40th grade in our list, we'll have 6s. And finally, 40 plus 1 is 41. And so from the 41st to the 45th grade, we'll be faced with 7s. Which are the 5 7s I wrote earlier on. And now that that's done, we can quickly figure out what the 11th and 12th values are. Indeed, since all the grades from the 10th in the list to the 19th are 4s, and in fact, I'll circle that 4 here. That tells us that the 11th value, and I'll just write 11th, is equal to 4. And the 12th value is also equal to 4. And since the lower quartile Q1 lies in between them, technically Q1 is equal to the average of the 11th and 12th values. In other words, Q1 is technically equal to 4 plus 4 divided by 2, which gives us 8 divided by 2 which of course is just 4. And so the lower quartile grade is 4. Okay, now that we've spent all of that time getting the groundwork done to find the lower quartile, luckily for us, it goes much faster now to find the upper quartile Q3. Here's the whole idea. Just as for the lower quartile, there's a formula to find the position of the upper quartile. And so I'll go ahead and write that here. The position of the upper quartile Q3 is equal to 3 times n plus 1 over 4. And I'll go ahead and box that formula as well. And here's the thing to notice. The n plus 1 over 4 inside this formula is the same n plus 1 over 4 as we had used earlier. In other words, we already know that this n plus 1 over 4 is equal to 11.5. Consequently, we can just replace this by 11.5 and then multiply it by 3 to find the position of the upper quartile. So let's go ahead, that's equal to 3 times 11.5, and you can of course check with a calculator, but 3 times 11.5 is equal to 34.5. And that's the upper quartile's position. And in a similar way to what we had for the lower quartile, this 34.5 tells us that the lower quartile lies in between the 34th and the 35th value in our list. And so we'll find what those are in just a second, but I'll already write 34th equals 2 and 35th equals 2. Okay, well let's see. Using the numbers that we wrote on the side of the cumulative frequency column, we quickly notice that from the 32nd to the 40th value, the grade obtained was 6. 
And since 34 and 35 lie between 32 and 40, we can quickly state that they must both equal to 6. And so the 34th equals to 6, and so does the 35th. And so the upper quartile, Q3, is equal to the average of the 34th and the 35th values, which we already know is 6, but if I write that out, that would be 6 plus 6 over 2. In other words, the upper quartile, Q3, is equal to 6. And we now have the upper quartile. And I should point out, when we have to calculate the average of two values, as we did here, those values won't always be the same, which is why I insisted on writing out the calculation here two times. Indeed, imagine if we had found that the position of Q3 was 31.5. Let me insist, that's not the case in our example, indeed we had found 34.5, but imagine for a second that the position of the upper quartile was 31.5. Well, that would tell us that the upper quartile would equal to the average of the 31st and the 32nd value. But looking at our table here, we notice that the 31st value is 5, and the 32nd value, well, it's 6. And so had that been the case, we would have said that the upper quartile is equal to 5 plus 6 over 2, which equals to 11 over 2, which equals to 5.5. Again, for the example we have here, the upper quartile is 6, but nevertheless I feel that it's important for you to see that this type of result is possible. That being said, let me scribble this out. We move on to the last thing we need to find, and that is the interquartile range IQR. And again, there's a formula for that. The interquartile range IQR is equal to the upper quartile Q3 minus the lower quartile Q1. And again, I'll go ahead and box that formula. Now, using the fact that the upper quartile we found was 6, and the lower quartile we found was 4, we can quickly state that the interquartile range is equal to 6 minus 4. In other words, the interquartile range IQR is equal to 2. And we're done. We now know how to find the lower quartile, the upper quartile, and the interquartile range from a frequency table. Remember, the formula that we have here tell us the position of the lower quartile as well as the position of the upper quartile and not their actual values. All that being said, that's it for this tutorial.